evening guys right I'm under a promise that three people said I'd show the special Alpina running and really excited actually to show this saw shout out Mike in Ireland great to chat earlier and So this girl's been a very interesting saw for me. Alpina in general, a really interesting company. Conigliano, Italy, and like several other companies as well, although Alpina don't have a huge history. Alpina started in uh, 1960, and they did, what did they start doing? Sides. They started doing a range of um, garden machinery, petrol scythes, and they didn't start chainsaws until 1968, and interestingly their first chainsaw was the, oh, the gorgeous Alpina 70, iconic saw, just because it's, not only was it their first saw, but just, it's an amazing saw. So, the Alpina 70, and then for the next 10 or 12 years, from 68 up to 80, they started to make some amazing additions to that range. This is one of them. This is the iconic A90. And nominal 90cc, just over. So these run a 54mm uh, piston and a unusual 39.1 stroke, just over... Um, unusual stroke 54 and 39.1 and the steel 50 and 51 behind 89 cc's that's a 52 42 and double felling spikes so some of these saws they share some real interesting similarities so let me grab this drill so this is steel's late 60s saw then taken you know, into the 70s with the 51. Double felling spikes at the front, double felling spikes at the front. AV mounted on the front handle, AV mounted. Top fill for the fuel, top fill for the oil, albeit lower down on this one. She has, just like the, the 75, the 76, the 50, the 51, the adjustable oil control here, just above the clutch cover, I absolutely love that. AV mount on the rear handle, AV mount rear handle, um, exhaust right side, exhaust right side, just a staggering number of similarities. And slightly more displacement. So this girl had an interesting problem in her running, which was that well, not engine running, but cutting wise. So this is the original solid nose bar that was supplied with her. Great tip symmetry, but whenever she's been cutting, she's been cutting in a curve, just, you know, banana cuts. And after dressing the bar, still curving, dressing the chain, still curving, replacing the chain, not as bad, still curving. And then, of course, you realize that it's the, the groove just over time. It's just splayed. You know, typically in the first 12 or 14 inches of the bar, the groove is splayed. And just letting the, the drive link just tilt as it gets partially through the wood. So I've got something really interesting to show you next time, which is... I don't make these anymore, sadly. This is one of the original boxed Oregon bar groove closing tools. And we're going to have to do this. We'll do it in a workshop. We'll get it set up. Or I'll show you on one of my stumps, which I have set up for this very purpose. So it looks like a, a cast chisel. And there's a V-shaped groove. And inside, you get several different size shims. You slot it into the bar, the shim engages, and then with this supported on a 
on a surface, you hit it with a lump hammer and it starts to close the groove and will bring the groove back in all the way along. And the shims are set, in fact, we'll talk about that, it's interesting. The shims are set um, approximately between, I think they're between 0.4 and 0.5 mil um, beneath the gauge of the of the drive link you're using so that the steel can bend in and then it kind of it recoils back hence that the, the shims are, are undersized and so this is going to be the first bar that I actually go all the way down on so we're going to um, do test with this one and it'd be really interesting just to see how much effort it takes to realign this groove bring it back into a tolerance and do some cuts and see whether or not that cures the the, the bowed cutting and I'm sure it will. Okay, let's put this out the way. So I'm really excited to show that. That's the yeah the bar groove closing tool made by Oregon. Strange how they no longer make it. Right, so hence that uh, made me wish to buy something special. Then I saw these harvester bars by our Oregon and so typically when people buy a harvester bar they associate it with a really really big beefy bar and a heavier gauge lots of Oregon chain would be you know an 18h or a 0.8 um, so a 2 mil be a 2 mil drive link but they still do one with heavier tie straps which will accommodate a 1.6 mil so a 0 0.63 gauge chain so I have a period brand new chain on here, brand new harvester bar, and I've been itching to show it on camera for the first time. I've got a small piece of wood set up, we'll just make sure she's running okay, because she's not cut with, other than doing the, the curved cuts. We'll make sure she's happy, and then we'll put something bigger on and see how this girl performs. Let me show how this girl runs, it's a monster of an engine. Um, it's just a special engine. Be kind. Decompression valve at the back, if I didn't mention. Same as with the 50. It's almost exactly the same location. straight up straight down rock steady idle and so I don't know on these older chains if they were ever pre-stretched so it'd be really interesting to see whether or not when she's in the wood if she um, stretches at all we'll put her through something we'll see how we go with the first cut first and unlike the the, the 70 model with the tensmatic system this is using a conventional chain tensioner and is just oh, it's just a spectacular engine. Right guys, this is exciting. So we'll do a couple of small cuts. We'll make sure she's not leaning out and then we'll we'll give her something more challenging. setup is it? That'd be fine for this test. obvious that we're going to need to put something big on for this girl. Okay guys I'm going to pause the vid and what should we put on? Okay I want to face off this piece with the down arm on so uh, let me see how tough that will be to bring across. 
Oh, beautiful cut. Oh, seven's going to have to share. Ah, oh, beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Sure if that's a great setup actually guys guys i'm gonna to have to pause let me just move this around hey guys right that's, that's still not fantastic but uh, okay i don't think she's going anywhere uh, no. Okay. All right, that's perfect. Okay. So this this wood has gone particularly hard. It's been down. Again, I should have cut this sooner. It's been down about. Uh, year and a half and it's gone really really hard but it'd be very interesting to see how she goes through right there how are we looking lovely okay <laughs> what a spectacular engine okay
spectacular running engine. So, ah, yeah, I was unsure whether or not, because the guide bars I think are 89 and the chain is 36, or I have to check what that was with postage. Um, I was unsure if that was worth the money, but that's worth every single penny. That's absolutely spectacular. And so that's running one of the period semi chisel chains and I am I'm going to now order a full chisel for her in this size and for the bigger bar I think she's a 25 or 26 I already have a full chisel for that and it might be a little bit excessive but why wow, what a fantastic engine it's just just sitting on the wood with no pressure and I don't know if you just saw it then it was that wood is heavy and this saw would just drag it a little bit like a tractor, but just... So there she is, that's the spectacular Alpina A19 operation, running one of the brand new Harvester. Um, that's the 16H, isn't it? The 16H 1.6 mil gauge bars. And hope that's enjoyable, guys. Full AV from the 70s. One of Alpina's finest saws. Just spectacular. Hey. Hey. Stay safe, guys. Bye for now.